Hey everybody, it's Andy with RS Experience and you've already likely heard about the cargo ship Felicity Ace carrying all those cars that caught fire. There were about 4,000 cars on board, 1,100 of, of which were Porsche cars. Now I feel for anybody who had a car on that ship. Um, you know, there were Audis and Lamborghinis and Bentleys and a lot of Volkswagens and even a few high-end Bugattis. But the question is, what will Porsche do for the owners with cars on that ship? Hey, I'm Andy, a high-performance car enthusiast with a passion for well-engineered automobiles. I love to drive mountain roads with like-minded enthusiasts, along with sharing driving tips and techniques in my Porsche GT3 RS and BMW M2 CS. So let's just start with kind of what we know. Uh, there were 3,965 cars from the um, VW group that were on uh, the ship. The value was about $401 million of cars that were on that ship. And my understanding is all those cars, um, they're not gonna be recoverable. The 22 crew members that were on board the ship were rescued. I mean, they were airlifted off the ship and take the safety and then the ship was just out there, you know, what's it called, lifting? Or it's just kind of by itself, kind of wandering around, floating around for uh, I don't know, almost six days. But my understanding is the fire's kind of uh, under control. It's not been confirmed, but there's speculation anyway that um, there were a lot of EVs on board, um, some of the Audi e-trons and then Porsche Taycans. And did those cars with the batteries, did they create the fire? But one of the things I think they believe is that those batteries burning kept that fire going for so long. What I've read is the lithium batteries, it takes a lot of water to extinguish those fires. In fact, the best way to put those fires out is to, again, what I've heard, is to submerge them underwater. Presuming that most of the Porsche cars that were on that ship were customer ordered cars. Now I know dealers um, get in some demo cars and other cars, but I, I would think a large majority of the Porsche cars were customer ordered cars. Um, from my knowledge, Porsche has contacted the dealers and the dealers have then in turn contacted the customer. Um, also, as I understand it, Porsche is going to replace those cars. So instead of, you know, obviously, you know, you're not gonna take the burned out car and then send it back to the person. So Porsche's um, uh, gonna have those car replaced. So the, the cars that were on the ship bound for the US, uh, that ship was bound for kind of the main ports that Porsche goes to along the east seaboard is uh, Davisville, Rhode Island, then on to Jacksonville, Florida, and then on to Houston, Texas. So most of the cars on board that ship would be from, say, Texas eastward. So anyone with a car probably like west of Texas more than likely was not on that ship and they're not impacted by the fire. The cars that were on this ship um, had delivery dates most likely in the March and April timeframe because you know the ship wasn't that far out to sea, right? Somewhere around the Azores. Uh, so by the time it crosses the Atlantic, gets to Davisville, gets unloaded, then goes to Jacksonville, then goes to Houston. I think some of these cars were uh, March, even April uh, deliveries. So they weren't due like in the next few days. So the replacement for these cars raises a couple of questions. So one is there's 1,100 cars that need to be replaced. So when you think of Porsche in the supply chain side, it's like there's like this additional 1,100 demand. So they've, you know, when they had their plans, these 1,100, let's just say, weren't in there. So now they got to figure, okay, now we just have to make sure that you know, we have the uh, supply on hand to build uh, these 1,100 cars that weren't, say, in the forecast. I believe what Porsche is going to do is they're gonna create new orders 
for these customers that were impacted. Uh, so those customers will then get to um, replace their cars. But the question is, what is the impact of that on cars that are already in the pipeline? So I think any orders that are in the pipeline, so anybody who's got a car that's gonna be ordered, I don't believe the 1100 are gonna jump the line. I think those cars that are in there and people have dates on those builds, those are gonna go through the system as they would normally. I think then what's gonna happen is, um, I think Porsche, I don't know, they have like 70, couple thousand cars a year, I think that come into the US. So that's 6,000 cars a month. So in the next round of allocations, like um, by the end of March, Porsche will get their next round, the dealers will get their next round of allocations. So instead of that being 6,000 cars, I suspect that'll be 4,900 cars. So that the 1,100 will kind of fit into that 6,000 number. So let's say you had one of those cars on board. So now my car, I was expecting to get it March, April, you know, like, when am I going to get it now? So based on some of the timelines with Porsche, I'm going to say you probably have, what, um, a 45 days maybe in this front end with the order and then another, you know, six to eight weeks to get the car shipped. Um, they may not, that might not be the exact timeline, but I'm going to guess the June, uh, maybe July even timeline when those cars will be replaced. So now let's think, um, okay, so I'm gonna get a new order. Am I gonna be able to change my order? Or is Porsche gonna say, hey, you know what? We have all these orders. We know all the supply and parts we need to build them because we already have the order. That's one way it would make it easier and more efficient for Porsche. But what about uh, maybe a customer wants to make a change? They say, well, you know, I, I couldn't make a change to the order because it locked and I, then I wanted to make a change. But now if they're giving me a new order, maybe I have a chance to, you know, do a reconfigure. And are they gonna allow me to do that? I think Porsche will do the right thing for the customer here. I think they will allow folks a new order. They will allow them to make some changes to their configuration. But I think that window of time between, hey, here's your order and your order locks, like no changes after this date, I think that might get a little compressed. But I do think they're gonna allow those folks um, uh, to make a change to their order. So if you think about this from Porsche's dealer side, so a dealer was gonna have these cars March, April. So say April, and say that dealer had, you know, 30 sales or whatever booked uh, for April, and that's what they were planning on, and they had 10 cars on that ship. Well, now they only have 20. So now their sales numbers are, like, say, down a little bit for that month, right? Yeah, they're going to get them in a future month, so in the end you go, well, heck, that's not a big deal. It makes them whole again. True. But some scenarios, right, you think through this. So one is, well, there's a couple here. I guess one is... A customer says, I don't want to wait that long for my car to come in. I don't want to wait that long. So what do you have on the lot now? Oh, well, you know, that, that Macan or that Cayenne, that one's good. I'll take that one. So now that order, right, there's, is, is Porsche going to allow that dealer, you know, to like keep the order, which I guess they would, but more importantly for the dealer, is will Porsche allow that dealer to make that allocation something else? So say this customer wanted a Targa 4S and say there's nobody else in their market that wants a Targa 4S, is Porsche gonna allow them to convert it to a, you know, a, a 911 cab, a 4S cab? Will they let them change that order? I think that's something um, that, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So I think over the next few weeks, we're going to see how this all plays out. As I said earlier, I think Porsche is going to do the right thing. For those of you that may have been impacted, I'm sure you've already been all over the forums, but I'm going to put a link down below to there's a on Renless forum. There is a whole thread about the Ace, uh, the Felicity Ace Fire owners impacted and folks are sharing some of their stories. So we'll put a link down 
below to that. Um, and if you've been impacted by this, I would love to hear from you. First of all, I'm sorry to hear about that. That's got to be super frustrating. Um, but would love to hear your comments on what's Porsche doing to make you whole again. This is Andy from RSX News. I uh, hope you like this update. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. And until the next time, stay healthy and stay safe.